YouTube boss it going the goat house is back with a way too early 2025 NFL mock draft do this right after the draft every single year I'm excited about it point is to kind of get to know the prospects that might be first round picks that we think could be first round picks some people come here paying attention too much to the order complaining about it it's not why you clicked on the video not that important right now used uh suitable odds reverse order of course so the Panthers ended up with the first pick of course I don't agree fully with these suitable odds but that is not the point of the video uh but I had the Panthers taking LSU's defender Harold Perkins actually plays linebacker for them but They'll blitz him a lot. They'll use him off the edge. He looks like a natural off the edge. I think a good comparison, like a type of player he could be, is Micah Parsons. You know, being that versatile piece, but upside off the edge. Would love for LSU to use him more uh, there this upcoming season. So you see, the defenders are going to be a little bit better in this in this next class at the top. I thought about another pass rusher for the Panthers here in a corner. We'll talk about those guys soon. So again, a little bit better at the top for defenders. We think for 2025. Uh, second pick, we got back-to-back -back LSU Tigers. So they still got some talent. Let's see if they can recover from losing their quarterback and their receivers. But Will Campbell, offensive tackle from LSU, going to the Patriots here to possibly be their left tackle. He really stood out uh, this season. But when watching tape on defenders from this past, the draft class, that just the draft that just happened, 2024, uh, really stood out against Dallas Turner. He won that battle, so... This is a legit top-tier tackle that it should be drafted towards the top here in 2025. Uh, will it be another LSU player? No. Staying in the SEC, Georgia player, Georgia quarterback, Carson Beck, who is projected to be that top quarterback, but it's a little up in the air. He kind of had a sneaky good season. You don't realize how productive he was, uh, and that was his first year starting for Georgia. I'd imagine a big step up uh, this year, which could put him – Secure a spot at the top. Uh, Broncos did just draft Bo Nix. Uh, if they were picking up here, I, I don't think Sean Payton would uh, be afraid to take a quarterback. Um, so they, they go with Beck here. Fourth pick, Titans go Luther Burden the third from Missouri. Uh, their big-time receiver who really electrifying, really fun to watch. How shifty he is, how, how he makes people miss, the speed that he has. Uh, just a big playability. There was a game Missouri was about to lose. It was the I think it was the Florida game, and he was they weren't really getting him the ball enough, but he made a clutch play at the end uh, to kind of help them get that win. Uh, so Titans could be pairing a guy like this uh, for with Calvin Ridley for the future. So um, he I don't want to give a full blown comparison to Tyree Kill, but he's like. He can make that type of impact, like that that type of play style in, at the NFL level. So uh, everyone, it seems like everyone loves Luther Burden and his play style. So um, he, I got him going four, five. Gonna go Jackson Dart, which actually, which actually could seem a little bold, but I am a big Jackson Dart fan. It is, it is a little bit of a tough projection though, because that Lane Kiffin offense doesn't really translate too well to the, to the next level. Um, kind of saw it in Matt Corral, but I wasn't a big Matt Corral guy. I was probably lower on him going into the draft than anybody, um, even though I'm I'm very surprised at how his career path went. I thought he'd get more of a shot. Uh, but Dart, I really like, and I, I he was a little inconsistent throughout the year, but really kept improving. Love the arm talent. Uh, in that Penn State game, in the bowl game, he really, really caught my eye. Some of the throws he was making, how clutch he was, so... I think he's got a future in the NFL. Um, got to be a little more consistent, and, and it will be tricky to evaluate because, again, that that system isn't really a pro system, obviously. So uh, maybe it was a tricky part for Matt Corral, but I do think Dart is a lot better of a just quarterback in general, but prospect. Uh, and I just see him in a Brian Dayball offense. I don't know. I can just see it. Thought really thought about Quinn Ewers here. Uh, I see either of those guys or Car Carson be Beck in. Uh, in that offense, so I really like this fit here. Um, but we don't, you know, we don't call it way too early for nothing. It's got to make some bold predictions here. Um, so Dart in the top five, number six, James Pierce Jr. from Tennessee. Man, he was fun to watch last year. Like he has legit NFL traits, explosive get off. He's got some polished pass rush moves as well, and gets to the quarterback. I actually considered him first overall to the Panthers. I was thinking pass rushers or corner. Um, and I strongly considered him first overall. So it kind of tells you, uh, you know, we got a legit guy here. It's weird seeing a Tennessee defender up here, um, even though they're, they're getting better at recruiting. 
and, and they're a better program than they kind of used to be. I'm um, kind of getting back on track to the Peyton Manning days. But, yeah, the Commanders did a really good job in this year's draft. They may need a big-time pass rusher by this time next year. So we'll go with Pierce from Tennessee, who really stood out, really caught my eye last year. Number seven, going to go T. McMillan from Arizona to the Cardinals. The Cardinals did just draft a big-time receiver in the first round, Marvin Harrison Jr., but they're probably going to need more. And, every, you know, today's NFL, it is dominant if you have a legit receiver duo and you would have one here with McMillan uh, and Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's it's definitely a candidate for the top receiver in the draft. Him and Luther Burden right now. There's a couple other ones in the conversation that we'll talk about but yeah he was ridiculous for Arizona last year. Arizona was a really good fun football team to watch especially down the stretch last year so um, McMillan to the Cardinals 7th overall 8th. The Vikings going Will Johnson from Michigan and I actually strongly consider Will Johnson first overall to the Panthers. I was really thinking edge, and there's some legit edge guys there we talked about in corner. And there's quite it's a pretty good corner class. We'll talk about more, but Will Johnson is legit. That's an elite cornerback prospect. We, we've kind of known about him for, for a few years now. It's going to be a few years. but uh, And usually when you have an elite corner prospect, they go even earlier than you expect. So he really could go at the very, very top. But this is kind of the floor for him going to the Vikings, uh, eight overall. Number nine, there's Shadur Sanders from Colorado. Obviously a big play, flashy guy, uh, you know, passer first. He'll have that big-time production uh, all over the field, really, but he'll also, he also can scramble and run uh, because of his athletic ability. The Raiders really wanted Jaden Daniels in this pass draft. Well, here's your next year's version of Jaden Daniels and Shadur Sanders. So I think teams will probably be split on him. Again, we do it. We don't really know that for sure until we see this upcoming season, but um, I, he's not going to be for everybody. But I think the Raiders would definitely love him. So I really like that fit. You know, Raiders were looking for a quarterback again this past draft, so they could be looking again um, next year. Number 10, going to go Malachi Starks for the Seahawks. They may need a safety at this time next year, a big-time playmaking free safety from Georgia. He's the guy that's kind of been on everyone's radar for a bit here, but um, should should be the top safety in the class, even though there there is a uh, few of them here. But Starks kind of could kind of revive that safety position. Well, Kyle Hamilton went pretty early a few years ago, but here could be another one that can go. Uh, you know, somewhat early. Uh, 11, there goes Quinn Ewers, who I think could go earlier. The first time I've seen Ewers play or, or the, you know, look at not look at when they lost Alabama two years ago, he actually got knocked out of the game. That was a very impressive game, being a young, you know, guy and getting, th you know, just kind of thrown in against Alabama, you know, and, and the poise that he had, the confidence he had. Uh, he really caught my eye from that point on. Um, and he's been a little inconsistent, but he has a strong arm. He makes those big plays and um, he's putting Texas back in uh, in the winning ways here. So I think the Saints would like him. Again, he he could be the first quarterback taken. We're starting to see the quarterback class is may maybe not as bad, and it, it's going to depend on this upcoming year, but not as bad as people say. Um, you know, there's no Caleb Williams, there's no Drake May, or, or maybe Jaden Daniels, but Jaden Daniels kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, we knew who he was since Arizona State, but he wasn't supposed to be that good. So somebody could be like that. And again, I have high hopes for Dart and his upside Beck's already discussed in the conversation. People are kind of split on yours. You know, there's some people that think top quarterback, and there's some people that think he's not even a first round pick. And then Sanders is obviously a big playmaker type at the quarterback position. So you got some guys here, and some other guys maybe could come out of nowhere as well. Uh, but you were to so the Saints that future the quarterback of the future. They did just draft Spencer Rattler. Um, not a lot of stock put into him though. Obviously, it wasn't like a top pick. 12, uh, another good corner here, Benjamin Morrison from Notre Dame going to the Buccaneers, so they might need a cornerback at this time next year, it feels like. Uh, Morrison was lights out as a true freshman two years ago, and that's kind of where he uh, uh, kind of put put the college football world on notice, and he was really solid again this year um, in Notre Dame's defense. Locked out Marvin Harrison Jr., so he's a little undersized in terms of, you know, he's a little thin uh, in the play strength. I, it's not a major concern, but that's really his only negative is you wish there was a little bit more strength, a little bit more weight, but there's a lot of corners coming out these days. But this guy's a lockdown dude, and he was a big-time playmaker two years ago, so um, should be one of the top cornerbacks taken. Uh, there's, a, there's a strong class, but there's a strong top two with uh, the Michigan and Notre Dame corners here. So I have him at number 12. At 13, another corner, Denzel Burke, who – 
when we were doing kind of our mid-season or during the season mock drafts, we were putting Denzel Burke in you know, kind of the bottom of the first round because um, he was looking really solid, and he was looking more and more solid as the year went on. But he decided to go back. was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, quite a few Ohio State guys surprisingly went back. Uh, but so that's good for him though, because he was kind of known as a late first last year. He can make himself into you know even better prospect than that. And the Colts could be looking to take a top cornerback next year in, in the draft. Fourteen, Michael Williams uh, was pretty solid for Georgia last year, but we're expecting like big time growth because that's, that's what Georgia Bulldogs do. They have, they have these top players, you know, top recruits, and and they just get better and better. If they're getting more reps, they they really. Uh, make a name for themselves and they end up being legit prospects. So uh, maybe the Steelers could be looking to prepare for uh, you know, like a future Cam Hayward in there to pair with Keanu Benton. 15, the Rams take Travis Hunter, who can play corner and can play receiver. Uh, I definitely like him more at corner, and that's kind of the, how he was a top recruit a few years ago. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a ball player. It's a playmaker. Really good in coverage, and I can see the Rams using him in both spots, to be honest. But um, So it should be a first-round pick as a corner, so he goes 15th to the L.A. Rams. 16, Kenneth Grant, definitely one to watch from Michigan. We'll talk about their other D tackle in a second here, uh, but it, who is more of kind of the bigger name. But Grant is definitely one to watch. Um, you know, He didn't get the full load of reps this year, but when he was on the field, this dude – was a disruptor. He's a game changer, and he's a freaky dude too. He's got freakish length and power, uh, and and the Jags are all about that, like the traits. So getting a guy in the interior could be the way here. I, I think he's not a huge name right now, but I think he is a guy that could be put in maybe the elite prospect conversation that could really rise up into that conversation because you kind of get you see the flashes and then what he could become. So definitely one to watch from Michigan here. I bet Harbaugh would probably want to get his hands on this guy, too. Um, you know, for the if the Chargers have an opportunity to. Seventeen, Jack Sawyer from Ohio State, former top recruit, and he's been, you know, kind of left wanting a little bit more, but he took a step up last year. I think he takes a big leap this next year, and kind of makes himself a first round pick, and kind of be that guy we thought before that he could become. Uh, the Browns could be looking for the edge of the future, opposite of Miles Garrett here, so. Um, they drafted Michael Hall Jr. this year from Ohio State. Not the reason I put Sawyer, but I kind of just realized that. So keeping the guys in the States. 18, there's Mason Graham, who's kind of the more of the star, the bigger name defense, interior defensive lineman from Michigan. Um, I do think Grant, maybe translator, has the traits of the NFL a little bit more. But uh, the Bears getting that interior guy for that stout defensive line uh, in Mason Graham, who could ultimately go earlier in this as well. 19, and there's Evan Stewart to the Chargers. The Chargers got Ladd McConkey in the early second round, but they're still going to need more receivers in the future. They're still going to need more for Justin Herbert. Uh, and Stewart was a Texas A&M receiver. He transferred to Oregon. He's going to be super productive there. This guy is, I love his releases off the line. I love his footwork. He's one of those, you can make a highlight tape just to, uh, on him with his footwork and getting separation. He actually gave Terry and Arnold my top corner in the draft, some issues this year. Uh, and remember when he was A&M playing Alabama, um, now he's going to be on Oregon this year. So I think he'll, he's not really a big name first round guy right now. He wasn't super productive this year. I'd watch out for him. Like he, he's a guy that's electrifying and, and just consistently gets separation. I'm excited to watch him with Oregon this year. So the Chargers kind of pairing him with Ladd McConkey for the future. Number 20, funny, we just talked about a Texas A&M guy that transferred to Oregon. Now here we have a Purdue guy that transferred to Texas A&M. Uh, big body, physical defensive end or pass rusher. Um, so I'm excited to watch him. Uh, Nick Scowerton from Texas is going to be on. I'm excited to watch him on Texas A&M this year. Remember, f uh, former Purdue guy. Uh, but, yeah, the Texans will have Daniel Hunter at this point on one more year left on his deal, so they could be looking for a guy of the future. A pretty balanced roster so there wasn't like a gigantic need here but I just a guy I can see like if you're going to try to replace the Neil Hunter like it's that type of guy like that you know he's not really a he specifically I thought he was like a, a the Neil Hunter replacement like that style of pass rusher and maybe with his build as well so a guy to watch as he is changing team uh, schools this year 21 Emeka Buka, who's kind of been on people's radar for a bit because he's been solid and he's been an Ohio State receiver um, or he's an Ohio State receiver who keeps pumping out some good receivers. 
Uh, you know, maybe a little underwhelming at times. You know, needs to stay healthy as well. But he's good. He gives people problems. Uh, he gives corners problems, especially from the slot. Like he's a really good separator. He gets open. So maybe your your next Jackson Smith and Jigba, you know, type player. So Jets pair him with Garrett Wilson, another another guy, you know, another Ohio State receiver. And then you got yourself a duo here uh, at pick twenty one. So some receivers, maybe not the receiver class last year, but it could become that. But you got some good ones here. A lot of shifty guys. A lot of shifty guys. I'm just realizing that. Um, you know, with, with most of the guys we've talked about. 22, Chicario Davis, another Arizona Wildcat, which, again, I love that football team this year. I was a, I was a big fan of, of how they were playing down the stretch. So, really solid corner here. Really caught my eye for the first time last year. Uh, you know, pair him with A.J. Terrell, or do they have to kind of prepare with life without him? I would hope not for the Falcons. But, um, you know, as his contract kind of coming, getting a little close to the edge there. Um, so, Davis for the Falcons. 23, Abdul Carter from Penn State. Another another freaky, flashy linebacker from Penn State that, I mean, you could move him to the to off the edge, but I, I like him at linebacker. He's just super rangy, could blitz. Uh, pair him with Chop Robinson in Miami. Just realized they took Chop this year. But Carter's actually dealing with an off-the-field issue right now, so I guess that's something to mo- monitor um, in his future, I guess. Way too early to determine those things. But he's, he's a first-round talent. It sure feels like it. 24, uh, Deion Walker from Kentucky. This is uh, this is a unique player. This is an interesting player because he is big, big body, interior defense lineman. Uh, I want to say he's over 340 pounds. So could it be the, this year's uh, Tavondre Sweat? He's a little little lighter than Tavondre Sweat, which is good. Uh, could it be a Jordan Davis type player? But man, he gets a lot of production getting after the quarterback, which is rare for a guy that size. So. That's one to watch. I guess his weight will be, will be a big factor, I suppose. But it's a unique player uh, that is not just involved in the run game here. So him going 24 uh, to the Packers. 25, Amer- Amarian Hampton from North Carolina. My favorite running. They're, they're, this is a running back class. Is there some leg- I have two running backs in this class. Other one's a little bit bigger of a name. But Hampton, I love his game. When I watch him, I'm like, this is a future legit NFL running back. I don't think people are people talk about Hampton because he's a legit running back, super productive, home run hitting guy. He's got an NFL build. Uh, but I don't think people are talking about him enough. Like this is a legit guy. Like we might have some first round running backs here because they are that good. The Cowboys did not surprisingly did not draft the running back in their draft class this year. Is that because they're completely turning it around and they're saying we're not going to value running back any, anymore anymore? Maybe what happened with Zeke and they didn't sign Tony Pollard, you know, maybe, or they're maybe kind of waiting for the right running back and next year's class is legit at the top. Like, again, we got guys that really could be first round running backs and Hampton's my favorite one. Um, just a complete running back, everything you look for, for a back. Um, so the Cowboys take him. I think he could be a star NFL, NFL running back. Uh, then 26, Calvin Banks Jr. from Texas. Uh, solid tackle. He could go a lot earlier in this. I was trying to find a spot for him. Uh, the Eagles could be looking for a tackle for the future, so that, that was kind of the floor for me when making this mock. Uh, 27, JT Tui Malau from Ohio State. Uh, you know, another Ohio State pass rusher. He's a guy that, you know, in terms of like consistent production, maybe a little underwhelming, but he makes way more of an impact than the stats show. Um Way more of an impact, like clutch moments, gets his hands on the ball, it just in, again in big moments. And I think he could take a he could take a step up this year. So a guy for the Lions to pair with Aiden Hutchinson, I could definitely see that. Uh, and then number twenty eight, another running back, Ali Gordon, who was a star running back, maybe the best in college football last year from Oklahoma State. Um, now maybe it's not the Bengals' philosophy to take a running back in the first, but they you know they they moved on from Joe Mixon. Yeah, they bring in Zach Moss. Is that the you know? It's not a long term deal. Is that an answer long term? Um, you know, I think they'll mix, they'll miss mixing a little bit, and then here's kind of your replacement, Ollie Gordon. This guy's a dude. Like he is, he is, uh, he's fun to watch. Like he can break tackles. He's gonna find the end zone. He's gonna grind out extra plays. He can make people miss as well. So we got again, we got maybe more than two, but the two that I talked about in this mock, like these to me really feel like first round running backs. We haven't seen these guys in, in a bit. So I'm excited about that. I, you know, I know the Bengals may, again, maybe not value that running back position like this, but 
Um, it's just a good fit. Something I could see there uh, in a big upgrade for them. And then 29, Xavier Watts from Notre Dame going to the Bills. I think it would be a good pairing with Cole Bishop. I like that pick a lot. Uh, Watts was one of the better defenders in all of college football this past year. Um, you know, led the nation in interceptions. And he played everywhere. I like him at free safety as a playmaker, but he's good getting downhill and forcing fumbles. And he could even play in the slot if you need him to. I don't think the Bills specifically would need it. I don't think they would need him there. But um, it kind of the safeties that are taking over today's NFL are the guys that do a bit of everything. But he was... Again, one of the better defenders in college football this year. Everywhere, everywhere making plays. And like you talk about the negatives of the best player in the draft this past year, Caleb Williams. And the first one that comes up is that Notre Dame game, like his negatives. And this was his worst nightmare in Xavier Watts. So um, it's a guy that could that could be, and maybe people will think he's a little undersized, so that could keep him out of the first round. But um, it's a do-it-all safety. There's a big-time playmaker. Kind of fits what teams are looking for in terms of safety in today's NFL. 30, Joshua Gray uh, from Oregon State. The tackle duo at Oregon State this year was really, really good. The other one just got drafted by the Saints in the first round, Taliesa Fuaga. Uh, Gray, I, I think, is really solid as well. And you kind of can see some upside at guard if he has to play there. It was the same thing with Fuaga. So the Ravens could definitely still use offensive linemen. Uh, and they could use them at you know left tackle, the future, or guard. So that, that kind of made sense there. Uh, 31, a little bold one with a tight end for the Niners, maybe trying to find a future George Kittle because obviously he's not going to be around forever and ever. But Colson Loveland should be the first tight end uh, off the board uh, next year. He's an absolute stud. And they had, Michigan had a tight end drafted this year too, but he, this is the better one, absolute stud. Um, you know, make some grabs in clutch situations, you know, big-time plays. So he should be a first-round pick. Uh, we got another Notre Dame tight end coming out, Mitchell Evans, that I, I think – um, c could probably be the next one, and it's really pretty close. He's he got injured at the end of last year, but he has some really good receiving ability, some incredible hands. Um, so a tight end at 31 here to the 49ers. He probably can go earlier in this, but trying to find a good spot to put him. And 32 went Danny Stutzman from Oklahoma. I thought he could come out last year, and then he would probably be a second round pick in the conversation, a top three linebacker. Um, you know, he had flashy, big playability. He was a big-time captain for that Oklahoma defense. He goes back to school, and again, I thought second-round pick if he came out this year, he can help himself a bit more. Um, like the length for the linebacker position. Could this, I think this could be another Jack Campbell-type linebacker, um, you know, for the NFL. I think maybe with more upside, to be honest. Um, so I'm excited to watch him in Oklahoma. Again, they were fun. Um, you know, he was fun with, you know, leading that defense last year. Uh, but sent him to the Chiefs there. Some really good players that just missed the cut. Uh, this is who I was feeling right now. But we're going to do more college football content this offseason, off and that will kind of get us ready for uh, who to expect for the next draft or who to watch for this season. So I'm excited about it. Go to our channel. Check out those recent videos covering the NFL draft. Winners, losers, grades, undrafted, free agency videos, a big one. Check those out. You won't be disappointed. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Be much, much appreciated. Uh, that will do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.